And now I know this is old news, but the Lions trade Matthew Stafford to the Rams for a 2022 and a 2023 first round pick, a 2021 third round pick, and quarterback Jared Goff. Now this is kind of like a crazy blockbuster, like two potential franchise quarterbacks getting swapped. Like that, you don't see that very often. And obviously what the Lions are trying to do here is rebuild. You know, they're getting a quarterback that they feel really high about. And they're getting some really nice draft capital to help boost them in this rebuild. So really, I don't have to go too much in the Lions here. But what I do want to talk about is the Rams and Matthew Stafford. They look like such a scary team this year. And honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if they win the division. I'm not saying they're 100% going to, but... I wouldn't be shocked if they do. So why do I think Matthew Stafford, who never won a playoff game, only reached the 11 win mark once in his whole career, will make the Rams a Super Bowl contender? Well here, I'm going to show you why I believe Matthew Stafford will find a lot more success on the Rams than they ever did with the Lions. So hi guys, I'm Jake and we're going to look at the Rams future with Matthew Stafford. And thank you for this great video idea. I appreciate your guys' comments and suggestions and I can't wait to do more later on. But anyway, so let's get started. So whenever you look at Matthew Stafford's whole career, you could see the Lions really aren't that great of a franchise. The last playoff game they won was 1991, and the last championship of any sort they ever won was 1957. This was before the Super Bowl era, like, the Super Bowl wasn't invented. There wasn't this huge event that is played every year at 1957. And the Lions just were always a really bad franchise. And I hate to say it, Lions fans, but you probably know at this point. And I'll show you what I mean here on what Stafford kind of had to deal with because if you look at Deshaun Watson, he had his best season ever and they only won four games. Like unless you're Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, a quarterback that is up to like a high level isn't always going to guarantee double digit wins every year. So here I'm going to explain why I feel that Matthew Stafford couldn't have a consistent winner with the Lions. So let's go to the first reason, you know, the run game was really bad. In Matthew Stafford's whole tenure with the Lions, they've only had one 1,000-yard rusher. And that was Reggie Bush, and he only had 1,006 yards, so he barely beat that. And he reached this mark in 2013. And if you don't feel that 1,000 yards is that necessary, you know, I get it, you know, as well, because the NFL nowadays has gone a lot to a two-running back system, so it's not always guaranteed. So let's look at yards per carry. The Lions' leading rusher only ran for four yards per carry, in four seasons. Now, of all those guys that were able to do so, only one of them had 150 or more attempts. And that was Reggie Bush, who had over 220. So he was really the only true workhorse that the Lions really had that was actually effective. Now, this is not good at all. As a quarterback, you need to have a good running back to help carry the load a little bit for you. Again, unless you're Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, not having a running back really takes a toll. Because no matter how good you are, each team that plays you just needs to expect the pass. They don't really need to expect the run. And it's so hard for Stafford to succeed whenever he doesn't have a running back giving him like five yards each carry. And yeah, Carry on Johnson did that, but he had like maybe not even 120 attempts. So he really wasn't as effective. And if you look at the Rams, they have a huge history of developing running backs. They've had elite production for Steven Jackson for so many years, and then Todd Gurley later on had three amazing years. Sure, Gurley did have his down years, but whenever he was good, he was one of the best running backs in the NFL, and no one could really doubt that. And right now, in 2020, Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson make a really good one-two punch. They both ran for a combined 1,200 rushing yards, which is really solid for two main running backs. And each of them averaged well over four yards per carry. So this gives Stafford two weapons to give to whenever he, he just needs to give it to a running back. And this really helped Jerry Goff out too, you know, he had some of his best years whenever Todd Gurley had some of his best years. And you could see how much a running back really affects a team winning, and the Rams have always been a winner with Sean McVay. And now let's look at the defense, and it, it was pretty bad too. Now I'll give them credit, they had a lot of okay years. They've only had one elite defense that could even get in the top 10, and three that ended up being in the top 15 during Matthew Stafford's tenure. And the only true elite defense they had was third in yards allowed and second in points allowed, so they were amongst the best in the NFL. And obviously, they had their highest win total that year with 11 in 2014. Like, you could see how much having just a really good defense could help Stafford. Other than that, you know, their other best in terms of yards allowed was 13. You know, that's okay, but they've never had a defense that could really help Stafford. You know, if you don't have a good running game and you don't have a good defense, Stafford has to carry the team. That's not key to success at all. And in 2020, the Lions have had the worst defense in points allowed and yards per carry. So yeah, they went 5-11, which is honestly 
better than so many other teams could have went if they had the 32nd best defense. And honestly, the Lions could have contended for the number one overall pick if they never had Stafford. And if you look at the Rams, they had the number one defense in points allowed and yards per carry in 2020. So Stafford's going from a team that had the worst defense in the NFL to the best. Obviously, the Rams are going to be a really good team. Potentially, hopefully. And if you look at the Rams' free agents, they're going to be only losing two really key free agents, I guess, on the defensive side. They'll be losing John Johnson and Leonard Floyd. And really, those guys are replaceable. Even though Floyd did get 10.5 sacks, he's still replaceable. Those aren't, like, huge concerns. They're going to have their three best defenders on that defense from last year back. They're going to have Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, and Darius Williams, who a lot of people don't really know, but he was an amazing number two cornerback, and I expect them to be really good later on. So they're going to have those guys and pretty much the rest of their defense except for two guys. And like I said before, they're replaceable, so Stafford's going to be having a really good defense in 2021. And also, if you look at the Lions free agents, they're going to be losing five receivers potentially if they don't re-sign them. They're going to be losing Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, Danny Amendola, Mohamed Sanu, and Jamal Agnew. Like, I really don't see them re-signing those guys, so I have no idea who the Lions are going to have at receiver next year. They might go wide receiver like a Jalen Waddle, or they could go offensive line just to protect Jared Goff. But anyway, like, I have no idea of the Lions receiver situation. It looks like their main target's going to be TJ Hawkinson. So yeah, Stafford's going to have Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, so I feel that's a huge upgrade to what he could have in 2021. Now, the third reason why I think Stafford's going to do so much better with the Rams in terms of wins is that he finally has a consistently really good head coach in Sean McVay. You know, Matthew Stafford had a one-year wonder in Jim Schwartz. He had an extremely mediocre Jim Caldwell, and he had a horrible Matt Patricia. And I guess, you know, time will tell with Dan Campbell, but we already know how good Sean McVay is in terms of an offensive mind. You know, Jared Goff was a lost cause with Jeff Fisher in his rookie year. And Sean McVay turned him into a pro bowler. And yeah, I know Jared Goff had had two really down years last year and the year before. But I really feel that since he signed that extension, he really felt safe. And his work ethic could have dropped. I don't know for sure. But that could also be a reason. You know, he signed a massive contract for the Rams. He really assumed he was going to be the guy there because you don't sign those extensions for just any player and you're not really the main guy for the Rams. So I feel Goff felt safe and he didn't really play too well. And I really feel that Stafford is going to be so motivated for the Rams even though he has an amazing contract himself. You know, Stafford never won a playoff game on a team that I already told you before hasn't won a playoff game since 1991. And the Lions haven't even gone close to any sort of championship since 1957. And you know, Matthew Stafford was on a pretty good Georgia team. So if anyone is so devoted to win, it's going to be Stafford. And he's in such a good situation because they have such a good offense, even though you know golf wasn't doing that well, but they have a good offense if Stafford can play to how he usually plays. They obviously have an amazing defense. So right now, the sky's the limit for the Rams. And honestly, I'm really excited for this 2021 NFL season. With all the quarterback turnarounds, you know, Carson Wentz got traded, you know, Deshaun Watson might get traded in these other quarterbacks, it's going to be very interesting. So who knows what happens, you know, I wish the Rams the best of luck because I like them. And I strongly anticipate the NFC West to be the best division in football. And I feel that the worst team in that division will go 9-7. and seven. And it kind of sucks for that whoever that team is going to be, but if each team plays to their potential, that's going to happen. You know, Matthew Stafford with the Rams and... Russell Wilson with the Seahawks, they're always going to make the playoffs. You know, the 49ers are getting back some key injury players in 2021. And the Cardinals have Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins. Like, they're going to compete. So it's going to be really interesting, and I'm really excited for the season. So thank you guys for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video. Thank you all for your support and your suggestions. I really like having, you know, a platform that people are watching and they're participating in. And it's just a lot of fun. It's really cool. So I'll see you guys next time. You guys are the 43 best people on YouTube. And I'll see you guys in two more days.